Welcome back, friends. I hope you enjoyed that story, Mr. Tiger Goes Wild. It's one of my favorite stories. And now today I'm going to show you how to make your own Mr. Tiger by drawing some basic shapes and uh, basic lines. To begin, I'm going to write my name on my paper and my class code, and then I'm going to flip my paper over. Now the first part I want you to work on drawing is the shoulders. So down in the corner, I would like for you to draw a nice big rainbow shape. Not too big, not too small. Now on top of that rainbow shape, I'd like for you to draw a circle, and that's going to be your tiger's head. So I'm just going to lightly draw a circle. That way if I don't like the circle, I can erase. Okay. Now, up here, I want you to draw his ears. They could be any shape that you like. Sometimes artists choose to make them round or pointed or triangular, but this is your Mr. Tiger, so decide what you want your tiger's ear to look like. And I like the story, and they were kind of rounded, so I'm going to kind of repeat and borrow that same idea. All right. Now, we're going to stop there for the tiger because the next step is to hide this tiger. In Andre Rousseau's painting, The Hidden Tiger, that we looked at, his tiger was hidden in a lot of different greenery, a lot of different trees and bushes and branches. So around the edge or the frame of your paper, I want you to draw some leaves. Now what I like to do is to draw some zigzags all the way around, different sizes. Some could be rounded, some could be pointed, but I want you to imagine yourself in a jungle, right? Even though you haven't maybe visited a jungle, you can still use your imagination and to fill in those ideas all the way around. Now your leaves don't have to look like my leaves, but these are just what's coming to my mind and it's really framing and starting to hide my tiger. Okay, welcome back for part two. Today we're going to paint our tiger. Uh, notice I got a nice big painting placemat underneath to protect my tables. I have some orange paint and a paintbrush. What I like to do is to outline slowly and carefully my tiger, and it's okay if you go outside the line a little bit. But I do want you to try your best to paint inside the line. So that means you might need to get paint often. And try your best to go all the way around. The reason why I like to outline first is so that I know where to stay inside. Go slow and steady so I get good craftsmanship. Good. Now that I filled in, now it's time to go in and paint paint inside his whole belly, slow and steady. And for this, I like to go back and forth, make nice, smooth brush strokes. So I completely painted the inside parts of my tiger. You may be wondering, Mrs. Kramer, where's all the facial details? Where's my tail? Well, I don't want you to worry about that this week. Today I just want you to draw your tiger, paint your tiger, and add a pattern of leaves all the way around. We're going to let this dry, and then next week I'll show you how we're going to make this tiger hidden with some leaves around. So stay tuned, have fun painting. Alright friends, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to fill in your background of your tiger painting and how to add some of the uh, grass around the frame to finish up our hidden tiger project. 
Um, I'm going to start with the background, and I've decided ahead of time that I want it to be kind of like the blue sky going through. So I pulled out some of my pastels. I have a couple different blues here. And what I'm going to start to do is just use the side of my oil pastel to kind of fill in this area and go right around my tiger. I'm going to start light because I find it easier to go light to dark. Um, it's really hard to cover up something if it's really dark. All right, I'm just trying my best. Get in all those little nooks and crannies around my tiger. And I really like the way this looks. I like that it has some texture, uh, making my painting a little more interesting. Get the other side. All right, so just turn your crayon. Use the side. Okay. Now I think I'm going to try um, the darker blue. And the same idea, just go around holding my paper tight and just kind of push and blend, see what happens with my sky. If I like this technique, I can keep going with it. If I decide I don't like it, then you can turn your crayon over and start to um, color in hard. Um, but I think I do. I think I like it. You can kind of blend with your finger and see what happens. I'm just going to do the same thing that I did with the lighter blue all the way around. my background. I like that it's uh, filled with lots of different blues and I like the smudging technique and using the side of my oil pastel. Now I'm gonna get some crayons for my leaves. Um, I pulled out a light green and a dark green and for this I'm actually gonna follow that line that I originally drew in pencil. And this will help separate my sky from my really cool wild jungle leaves going all the way through. And this is a great time to decide if you want to make it a little bigger um, and go right on top of that blue. Now I'm going to use my oil pastel to go back through and fill in my leaves. And for this part, I'm going to use the tip of it and push harder. So I really want my leaves to stand out more than my background, my sky. Now, are all leaves always one color of green? No, they're filled with lots of different tints and shades of green. But to get started, I'm just going to lay in a couple leaves in one color. And then what I can do is go on top using a brighter green maybe mix my own green color. Maybe for the next couple I'll switch it up. Add a little more green on top. I can blend. Blending is really fun with oil pastels. Okay. And if I want I can even add a little yellow and that might lighten up things more too. Let's see what happens if I do yellow first. Because sometimes plants, um, the leaves will fall off and shed because, you know, they've died, but new ones will grow. And that looks pretty neat, too. Um, so I'm going to go all the way around and color in there.
of black and I'm going to start to draw in the shapes. So in the center of my tiger, I'm going to draw a triangle for the nose. Underneath the nose, where the snout is, my little trick is to draw the letter J and a backwards J. I'm going to fill in the nose. And then I think maybe with my white crayon, I can fill in this area right here, the top of the snout. Just got to be careful that you don't get too close because it will start to make, that's right, gray. I'm just going to fill in that area. And then I can go back up on top and add those little dots. And maybe over here I'll add some whiskers. So I know that it's a tiger. Um, to make it look like a tiger and not a cat, not a house cat, what I like to do is draw two straight lines up from the nose. And that will be the bridge of the nose. And then from here I draw the cat eye. It's a, flip, a rainbow shape with a smiley face. Same thing on the other side. Same thing on the other side, a rainbow shape and a football shape. Now to give it that really cool cat eye, it's almost like drawing in a grain of rice. It's really tall and thin. And you got some tiger eyes. Uh, you can draw in some eyebrows. I don't know if he's a angry cat or a happy cat. Wild cat, like Mr. Tiger. All right, so use your eyebrows to show some expression in there. All right, it's starting to look like a tiger, but I need a few more things. Um, down by his belly, I'm just going to draw two straight lines, and that's going to indicate where his front legs would be, like that. And to show that it's a tiger, I'm going to draw some stripes. Some friends like to draw triangles and fill them in, some wavy lines. It's really up to you. I want you to use your imagination and think about what would your tiger look like if you were to go to I'm just going to use the zigzags. All right. I'm going to wait to uh, go in and fill that in first because I see um, it's starting to get a little messy. Oil pastels are awesome, but they're very messy. And you can see my fingerprints. So I'm going to wait on that. And I'm going to go to the top and add in some more details um, for his ears. And for this, I'm just going to outline and outline. And then I'm going to use a little white in here to show where the tiger's inside of the ear would be. a little bit. Alright, so I think I like that so far. I'm happy with my tiger. And now I'm just going to finish outlining everything. Go all the way around your tiger. Trace around the head and the body. And this will help make your tiger really stand out. Against that beautiful blue background and the green leaves. The trick with oil pastels is to go slow and steady so that you don't smear everything and uh, get those unwanted colors. All right, I'm just going to work um, slowly all the way around to fill in my tiger and we'll see how it works. <music> finished tiger. Um, I was inspired by Henri Rousseau, French artist, um, and the painting that we looked at was called Surprise. Um, and then we followed up and we read the book uh, about Mr. Tiger. So if you wanted to um, maybe add a top hat or something, uh, that sounds great. Be creative um, and make your tiger your tiger. I hope you enjoyed this project. I look forward to hanging them up.